One to go right here. We will show you the rundown of all the drivers. So through pit stops, Ron Moroso is the leader, Dennis Marlin, Gordon, Burton, Allison, Dale Earnhardt Jr. your top six, with Casey Elliott in the seventh. And there you see Dale Jarrett is back to 18th position because of those shenanigans. And then you see Robbie Gordon acting 26, Rusty Wallace 27th, and Ward Burton is back in 24th position. And there you see the rest of the field. John Nemechek has also gone behind the wall with Chris Trickle and Tim Richmond. And in Bogart, he had a few, some troubles, and so he went out early. So Ricky Rudd is still farther in the back. It'll be interesting to see if he can make his way forward, as well as Tony Stewart. Both of them are still pretty far in the back, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they can gain any ground on Jeff Gordon. The problem is, Jeff Gordon is in third position. So if they have any challenge for Gordon, they need to move up now. Now, as you see there, Jimmy Spencer is in front. He was able to get out of pit road before the leaders did, and so he is currently on the tail end of the lead lap. It will be interesting to see, though, how this restart unfolds, because without that hood, Jimmy Spencer will not be as fast. So here we go. Pacer is making its way down pit road, and we're gonna have a short sprint to the finish. As here we go, Ramoroso leads, and it's Marlon Gordon and Jeff Byrne, your top four. And look at that, Marlon underneath Moroso with just 18 laps to go. And Spencer immediately goes up to the high side as Moroso and Marlon are 1-2. Cars are spreading out two and three wide behind as the top three have now cleared Jimmy Spencer with Jeff Gordon now in third. On board with Sterling Marlin and look how close Sterling Marlin is to Rob Moroso. Moroso clears Marlin for the moment as Moroso will lead that lap. Meanwhile, Jimmy Spencer is holding up a few cars in the back, including Dale Jr. and Jeff Burton. It looks like Dale Jr. has cleared Spencer for the fourth position as Davey Allison moves into the fifth. Moroso, Marlon, Gordon, one, two, three for the moment as they go into turn number three and look how close all of them are. Should be noted that most of them should be good to go all the way to the end. We'll let you know if there's any problems. Speaking of problems, look at this mess. Adam Petty fought farther in the back with his father, Kyle, Ryan Newman, and how about Dale Earnhardt three wide as we have a battle for second. Jeff Gordon, point leader, underneath Sterling Marlin, put him P2. That is exactly not what Ricky Rudd or Tony Stewart wants to see. Moroso continues to lead. Dale Jr. fourth, Jeff Burton underneath Davey Allison now for the fifth position. Johnny Benson, you see a little farther back as Jeff Burton tries to capitalize and it looks like he should be able to right there as look at this mess. And Ryan Newman is right behind Spencer. That's big problems. But fortunately, Ricky Rudd, big advantage for him as he has passed a few spots and put him into the top 20. Jimmy Spencer continues to hold up the high side as Casey Elliott is gonna go underneath Jimmy Spencer now. Mike Skinner, Blaze Alexander, all underneath. As look at that batch of cars. And guys, Tony Stewart, he is hanging out in the 30s right now. So this could be major. Whoa, man, look at that. Ryan Newman being un impatient with Jimmy Spencer. As they are three wide. As now Newman and Wallace, those are the highest running Penske drivers. And they are both far, far in the back. As there you see Tony Stewart with John Andretti, Brendan Gaughan, and Kurt Busch. Can Tony Stewart get around Jimmy Spencer? Meanwhile, the leaders are still one, two, three, as Jeff Gordon has not made a move on Moroso yet. But the question is, is he even putting on the heat? Is he even challenging Moroso, or is he just riding it out? Because honestly, points-wise, this is going to be a big day regardless for Jeff Gordon. But look at Gordon as he messes up as Sterling Marlin goes underneath Gordon now for the second position. Side by side they go as Marlin is in second position for the moment, but can Jeff Gordon get the strong run to the high side? Down into turn number three now. Yes, he does. Put Jeff Gordon back into the second position. If you run that high side correctly, you get such a strong run off that corner. Meanwhile, Dale Jr. continues to hang out in fourth with Jeff Burton still in fifth. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart has some major problems as he is stuck behind Jimmy Spencer. 
John Inch ready underneath, and look how close everybody is. Mark Martin, who was involved in that last wreck with plenty of damage, as Tony Stewart swings high, that is not the right direction Tony Stewart needs to go. As they go down to turn number three now, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart side by side, as Tony Stewart now is going to try the high side, but not necessarily the best place to go, as Mark Martin now side by side with Tony Stewart, Jimmy Spencer's teammate Kurt Busch hanging out behind. Down into turn number one, Tony Stewart side by side now with Kurt Busch, Elliot Sadler right behind Tony Stewart. Boy, not, not making a lot of progress as look how much ground he has to make. As look at that, down the front straight away, that's where Moroso is. So something bad needs to happen to Gordon in order for Stewart to get any advantage whatsoever. Moroso, as you see there, continues to lead. He has led every lap since the restart. Joe and Marlon hanging out still in third. And guys, this has been a very interesting season so far. Lots of action, lots of different winners, and lots of wrecks too. As you see Marlon about to lose the spot to Jeff Burton. But yeah, we've had quite a few races where multiple cars have flipped. And that is very interesting to say the least. As Marlon, He's going to try to keep third position for the moment. And it should be noted that Jeff Burton is in four passing Dale Jr. And John Andretti is going up pit road. Sounds like he has a flat right front tire as the leaders are about to pass John Andretti right about now. And with seven laps to go, and look at that. Jeff Gordon and Rob Morosa have pulled away from Sterling Marlin. It looks like Marlin's handling has gone away. Jeff Burton and Dale Jr. as we go on board here with the Sterling Marlin as Jeff Burton is all over the back of Sterling Marlin. Burton going to try to give Marlin a nice little bumper and not so much. Sterling Marlin keeps it for now. Meanwhile, there is Ricky Rudd in a little bit of a battle with Dale Earnhardt to the front, Dale Jarrett to the back, and Adam Petty in front of both of them. Adam Petty continues to show that he belongs in the Cup Series. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt looking at him underneath Adam Petty as they're going to go side by side in turn number three, almost as Ricky Rudd is going to try to go on top of Dale Earnhardt. Oh boy, here we go. For the lead, Jeff Gordon side by side with Moroso, and Moroso, I believe, led that lap. Yes, by the slimmest of margins, but Jeff Gordon, he has a strong car, and if, again, if Gordon leads a lap, that's going to make it so much harder for Rudd and Tony Stewart. And so Moroso, he's thinking about his teammate, and he is going to fight for every muscle in his nerve. As John Andretti, he is off of pit road. As Moroso still leads that lap of only four laps to go. Jeff Gordon all over the back of Rob Moroso. Gordon wants those five bonus points. Gordon knows he will not get the five extra bonus points for leading the most laps, but still, five points means everything. As we are on board with Jeff Gordon here, as he's going to get close to Rob Moroso, I wonder if John Andretti is going to have any factor. I don't think so, because John Andretti does have a fresh pair of tires, so it'll be interesting to see if it affects um, them at all. One car farther up ahead is Terry Labonte, as we do want to quickly give a nod to both of the Andy Petrie cars of Bobby Hamilton and Joe Nemechek. It should be noted that Bobby Hamilton will be back in 2002 in the 55 car, but Joe Nemechek will not. As Adam Petty goes to the side here, and look at this! John Andretti just barely in front of Ron Moroso with now only two laps to go. Moroso trying to get underneath John Andretti, and can Bromoroso pass Andretti? Coming off his road board again with Jeff Gordon as we go down here and Bromoroso, something happened to him as he did not get through that corner right and look at Jeff Gordon to the high side. They're gonna be side by side through turn number four as Bromoroso trying to do everything they can and coming down the front straight away. Last lap and Jeff Gordon just led that lap. Give him five bonus points. A couple of cars are on pit road as Jeff Gordon and Moroso side by side and we got problems in turn four. Ryan Newman, Bill Elliott, Tim Steele, a couple of cars trying to slow down, Bobby Labonte. Oh boy, I think he went up and over and this is in turn four. Jeff Gordon and Ron Moroso, they know that their wreck is in turn number four and they're slowing up. Jeff Gordon going high, Moroso going low. Here they come, Kurt Busch is slow, they're bumping, they're banging. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my gosh. Jeff Gordon and Moroso side by side as cars keep piling in. Man, that was intense. And they're giving the nod to Rob Moroso. Moroso at the last moment has won here at Phoenix. So here's the pass for Jeff Gordon as he goes past Rob Moroso. Now here's the replay. Bill Elliott was trying to go down pit road. Newman, he had nowhere to go as they both wreck as Elliott Sadler there and Tony Stewart, oh, just barely escaped as Tim Steele. And guys, they're racing to the finish. And there you see Bob Levine gets absolutely popped by Kurt Busch as he goes up and over. Fortunately, he does get out of the race pretty fast. There you see Jimmy Spencer literally coming to a stop. Now here come the leaders. Boy, there's nowhere to go for Sterling Marlin, Jeff Byrne, or Bobby Hamilton, or Adam Petty. As the rest of the cars pop on in, Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, lots of cars, Stacey Compton plaza in. Now here's the slow-mo of the finish. Moroso gets in the back of Andretti. Gordon fighting back to the high side. And Moroso, by 36 one thousandths of a second, gets the win here at Phoenix. Dale Jr., I believe, got third. And boy, this, this brings up a big question. Because, I mean, they raced back to the line. And the wreck was in their path. So, man, that was extremely dangerous for sure. But either way, Ron Moroso is indeed your leader, as he has led the most laps. Jeff Gordon, he there should be a star by him. He did lead a lap. Dale Jr. third, Marlon, and Jeff Burton, despite crashing, did finish in the top five. Bobby Hamilton sixth, Adam Petty continues his rookie run in seventh, then it's Davey Allison, Johnny Benson, and how about Jeremy Nadu in the final Invader Zim run finishes 10th. Joe Nemechek just misses the top 10, but Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, 13th, so that is not good for him. Jarrett, Kyle Petty, they say they're 14th and 15th. Blaze Alexander was able to come back and finish 19th. And then Brennan Gone finishing in the top 20. Here's a few more here. And we did have a few drivers that did come down pit road with three, two laps to go, unfortunately. And they see Ryan Newman, he is the last car on the lead lap. And so a few cars, including Casey Elliott, Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, and Stacey Compton, they did all come down pit road. Tim Steele as well and Bobby Labonte also. And then as mentioned before, John Nemechek, Trickle, and Richmond were all from out from that wreck. And Rick Bogart, he had the early troubles. So here are the point standings. So Jeff Gordon continues the lead. Ricky Rudd has now solidified himself in second position. But the question now is, is it too late? Technically, no. Mathematically, Ricky Rudd can still come back. But Gordon will need to have problems of his own in order for Rudd to have any chance. Stewart has now fallen to third, Jeff Burton fourth, then it's Dale Earnhardt, Davey Allison, Rusty Wallace, Sterling Marlin, Adam Petty ninth, and finally Dale Jarrett. So that'll wrap it up here from Phoenix. Thank you guys so much for watching the Checker Auto Parts 500, and we hope to see you again soon. Race number 34 takes us back to Rockingham Speedway for the running of the Pop Secret 400. Here is your race notes. 43 laps, 43 cars, 46 have entered. We'll tell you the three that failed to qualify here in a couple of minutes. Pit stops one to two, and it all depends on when you make your first pit stop. Now we had a lot of silly season news coming out this week. First of all, it is announced that Ron Hornaday will run for Rookie of the Year and will drive the primary car for Melling Racing. Melling Racing did also announce they will have a second part-time car with multiple drivers in it. Those drivers will be announced at a later date. Number and sponsor will also be announced at a later date as well. Also, in kind of out of nowhere news, Mountain Dew will not sponsor Rob Moroso in 2002, which is a shame because the week before, Rob Moroso won at Phoenix. Mountain Dew did say they will be a NASCAR, they're just not going to sponsor Rob Moroso. And then finally, after a long wait period, Mike Skinner and RCR have announced they have signed a four-year extension together. So Mike Skinner is not going anywhere. He is staying put at the 31 car. However, Lowe's will not return and Lowe's will go over to Hendrick Motorsports. 
They did not say which car they're going to sponsor. They just said that they are going to be with Hendrick in 2002. And then quickly, the three that failed to qualify include Elliot Sadler, Bobby Labonte, and Brett Bodine. And on pole is Kenny Irwin Jr. who has won at Texas and the Night Bristol Race alongside Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Craven, and Ricky Rudd in the turn number one. Leading the first lap is Kenny Irwin Jr. Rusty Wallace follows in suit. 35 laps ago, we see Bill Lesser, the third Dodge car, as he is going to replace Casey Elliott in 2002. And then you see Bill Elliott behind Casey. With 30 laps to go, Rusty Wallace tries to pull a move on Kenny Irwin Jr., but Kenny gets a strong run to the outside, and there you see behind Ricky Rudd trying to stay as close as he can to Jeff Gordon. But then the impossible happens. 28 laps to go, Kenny Irwin Jr.'s motor let go, and Kenny Irwin has to go into the grass. Because of the oil on the racetrack, and because of the smoke, the caution eventually does come out, and Kenny Irwin would end up going behind the wall. With 25 laps to go, pit stops occur as Jeff Gordon was able to get out in front with Ricky Rudd behind. This is exactly not what Ricky Rudd wants to see, as Jeff Gordon does get five bonus points for leading a lap. We also had a little collision on pit road between Kurt Busch and Alan Kowicki. They both had some problems, but they do stay on the lead lap. 22 laps to go. It's Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Craven, and Rob Moroso, your top five as they go into turn number one. Soon after, a couple of cars had to make some extra pit stops. That is Kurt Busch and Jury Nadu. And as a side note, this is the first race Jury Nadu will have the Jimmy Neutron paint scheme. F9 laps to go, Jeff Gordon continues to lead, but then with four to go, Jeff Gordon had to make a pit stop. Huge championship implications here, as Jeff Gordon goes on pit road, and Ricky Rudd will take the win as he comes off of turn number four, and Rudd is your winner. Jeff Gordon, as you saw there, was a lap down. Here's your top ten. Moroso Rudd finishes 1-2, with Ricky Rudd winning, Rob Moroso finishing second. Dale Jr. still cannot find his first win as he finishes third. Michael Waltrip fourth, then it's Matt Kenseth, John Andretti, Tim Steele, who's had such a hard time this year, was able to come back and finish in the top ten. Then Davey Allison, Mark Martin, and Ward Burton rounds out your top ten. So here are your point standings. Ricky Rudd was able to chop 50 points into Jeff Gordon's lead. Tony Stewart has lost quite a bit of ground on Jeff Gordon. Jeff Burton remains in fourth and could potentially jump into third if Tony Stewart has another, another mistake. Dale Earnhardt remains in fifth. Davey Allison remains in sixth. Rusty Wallace in seventh. Marlon eighth. And how about Dale Earnhardt Jr. Moving up from 11th to 9th in points as Dale Jarrett remains in 10th. Adam Petty loses two spots to 11th in points. Getting to the end now, with the second to last race in the 2001 season for the 2001 Penzoil Freedom 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway. Race notes are as so, 30 laps, 43 cars, 50 have entered as several teams are preparing for the 2002 season. Pit stops, if you play the cards right, you might possibly not have to pit at all, or you might have to pit once. Now lots of news has come out for Silly Season once again. First of all, not as big of a surprise, but Casey Atwood is going to replace Terry Labonte in the number 5 car. Also, it has been announced that Clifford Allison, who's been running some Bush Series races this year, he is going to replace Joe Nemechek in the 33 car for Andy Petrie. Sponsor for that team is to be announced. And then finally, Shauna Robinson will run the full 2002 season. The cars that fail to qualify is a big list. Kyle Petty, John Nemechek, Chris Trickle, Bobby Labonte, Brett Bodine, Frank Kimmel, and Jeff Bodine all miss the show. But on pole, it's Tim Steele, who came up with the top 10 finish last week, is on pole with Tony Stewart, hungry to try to get as many points as possible with Dale Earnhardt and Sterling Marlin and Steve Park, your top five, as they go into turn number one. 
Down the front straightaway, Tim Steele continues the lead as Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt follows suit. 28 laps to go, Benson almost spins out Adam Petty, but Benson gets karma as he, along with both Burton brothers, spin in turn number one. Caution does come out, but as the drivers do come back to the line, Tim Steele does move up the track, giving way to Tony Stewart, and Stewart will be the leader coming to the caution. 23 laps to go, restart ensues as Stewart, Steele, Earnhardt Park, and your buddy Jeff Gordon in the top five. 17 laps to go, four wide doesn't work as Jeff Burton, Kurt Busch, and Casey Elliott all spin down the front straightaway. But like the first caution, they all just spin and they keep going. However, coming to the caution, lots of cars have problems here as lots of cars jam on in and a few of them had to go behind the wall, including Jeremy Mayfield, Jerry Nadeau, Kenny Irwin, and Terry Labonte. Restart with 11 laps to go as Sterling Marlin and the Kiss car goes into turn number one underneath Mark Martin. Steve Park, as you saw there on the inside, he had a flat run front tire, and so he needed to pit as well. Seven laps to go, Sterling Marlin underneath Tony Stewart for the lead. Tony Stewart tries to fight back because Stewart knows he needs to get as many points as possible if he has any shot to win the title. But as they come to the finish, Tony Stewart is all over the back of Sterling Marlin, but it will not be enough as Marlin will win his first race of the season at Homestead. Here is your top 10. Tony Stewart fortunately did lead the most laps, but he didn't get all the potential points. Davey Allison finishes third, and Ricky Rudd finishes fourth, and Jeff Gordon finishes fifth, making it all that much harder for anyone to beat Gordon. Alec Wicke comes away with a top 10 finish, then it's Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Matt Kenseth, and Tim Steele gets away with a second top 10 finish. And here are your points coming into the top or into the season finale at Atlanta. The only driver that has a feasible shot to beat Jeff Gordon is Ricky Rudd and Gordon needs to have some severe problems if Ricky Rudd is gonna win the title. Tony Stewart has unfortunately been mathematically eliminated. Jeff Burton remains in fourth. Davey Allison and Dale Earnhardt swap positions. Wallace and Marlin remain the same. Dale Jarrett moves up to ninth in points and Dale Jr. drops back to 10th in points. The season finale is here, and it's at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Napa 500. Here are your race notes. 35 laps, 43 cars, 51 have entered. We'll let you know who failed to qualify this race here in a little bit. One pit stop is necessary, and here are your two big news things for silly season. First of all, in a big announcement, Terry Labonte will join AJ Foyt Racing and he is bringing Kellogg's with as the primary sponsor. So the big question is, will this be a step up for AJ Foyt or will this be a step down for Terry Labonte? We'll find that out next season. And the other big news, Casey Elliott will join June Dunleavy Racing full time in 2002. Sponsor is pending as we'll figure that out later. And so that is it for announcements. We will figure everything else out in the off season and we will see it all play out in 2002. But before we get there, we gotta talk about the rest of this season. The cars that failed to qualify include, and it's a big one, Ken Schrader, Steve Park, Kyle Petty, Stacey Compton, Jeremy Mayfield, Casey Elliott, who we just talked about, Bobby Labonte, and Brett Bodine. But on the pole once again is Dale Earnhardt Jr. as Jury Nadeau is to the high side, then it's Blaze Alexander, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Jarrett. Mind you, this is Blaze Alexander's third race as he is in second as Dale Jr. leads lap one. And look at this four wide as Alan Quick goes underneath Jason Leffler and a handful of drivers. Leffler, as you guys know, will be the third full-time driver for Joga's Racing. 33 laps to go, Blaze Alexander can pull a huge upset as he passes Dale Jr. 27 laps to go, Blaze Alexander has a new challenger and that is Jeff Gordon. He is not going away anytime soon. But 23 laps to go, Jeff Gordon has another challenge. By Blaze Alexander. Alexander is not giving up either. But 22 laps to go, Gordon continues to fight back as the top five are close to each other as Kevin Harvick is in fourth position. 21 laps to go, Irvin and Skinner get into each other and this causes a big wreck. 
Joe Nemechek gets in the back of Irvin, and Nemechek, just like the first Atlanta race, will fall out of the race because of a wreck in turn four. 19 laps ago, the one pit stop takes place, and Dale Earnhardt takes fuel only, as he is in front of Jeff Gordon now. Harvick third, Tony Stewart, and Blaze Alexander are your top five. 16 laps ago, restart takes place, as Dale Earnhardt doing something different, trying to get one more win, but this gets chaotic. Dale Earnhardt is your leader, but look at Stewart underneath, as Stewart technically does not have a shot at the championship, but watch this. Down the back straightaway, Dale Earnhardt ends up getting a flat tire, and Davey Allison and Mark Martin get into each other, taking out Moroso and a handful of drivers. Adam Petty gets bumped, and look as quite a few cars pile on in. Mike Skinner ends up going upside down, Dave Blaney almost flipped, Bill Lesser heavy damage, and with 10 laps to go, Tony Stewart is your leader. Blaze Alexander and Jeff Gordon are second and third, with Kevin Harvick in fourth, but with four laps to go, the season ends under caution. Chris Trickle, Mark Martin, goes up and over, and this wreck is huge. Tim Richmond, the 14 car goes on its side, and John Andretti gets picked up in the air, upside down, Tony Stewart will come back to the line as your winner, and Tony Stewart is in front of Jeff Gordon. Here are your final results. As Tony Stewart leads the most laps and wins here at Atlanta, Jeff Gordon finishes second, then it's Marlon, Wallace, and Alan Kowicki finishes in the top five. So, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, Rusty Wallace, and Alan Kowicki are your first drivers for the Phenom Five next season at Daytona. Brody Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Blaze Alexander finishes in the top 10, Bill Elliott and Johnny Benson finish in the top 10. So as the season comes to a close here, it is time to give out the awards. Before we talk about the top 10 in points, let's talk about the other awards. First of all, the Rookie of the Year. We thought this was going to be a competition, but one driver completely stood out from the rest, garnering three wins in the season, and that driver is Adam Petty. Adam won at Rockingham, Milwaukee Mile, and Martinsville. Congrats to Adam Petty for being the 2001 Rookie of the Year. The Manufacturer's Champion. That belongs to Chevy. Congrats to Chevy and all of your success in 2001. The most popular driver. So on social media, I talked about the top 10. Here are the top 10 vote getters in order. Number 10 is Ricky Rudd. Number nine is Rob Moroso. Number eight is Davey Allison. Number seven was Jimmy Spencer. Number six was Tony Stewart. Now, number five, was Alan Kowicki with 5.4% of the votes. Number four was Dale Earnhardt Jr. with 9.2% of the votes. Number three was Dale Earnhardt Sr. with 13.1% of the votes. Number two is Adam Petty with 13.3% of the votes, which means your most popular driver of 2001 is Jeff Gordon, who garnered 14.1% of the votes. Thank you guys so much for voting. It is greatly appreciated. A couple more awards. The Comeback Driver of the Year belongs to Rob Moroso. Moroso, who at the beginning of the season was hanging out around the mid-20s, was able to work hard, garner three wins in the second half of the season, and it was able to finish 13th in points. So congrats to Rob Moroso and that whole team. The upset of the year belongs to Robbie Gordon when he won with Morgan McClure Racing at Watkins Glen. Robbie Gordon only attempted the road courses and failed to qualify both Riverside and Sonoma. Robbie Gordon was able to qualify for Watkins Glen and was able to put a number on the rest of the competitors. The finish of the year belongs to Phoenix, where Jeff Gordon and Rob Moroso had the epic battle to the finish and they had the crash in turn number four, and so they had to evade trouble while racing for the win. 
the crash of the year has to be the Southern 500. At the very end, three cars flipped over, including my scooter, Mark Martin, and Alan Kuwicki. Few of the drivers were shaken up, but everyone continued racing the following week. The controversial moment of the year, the final award, belongs to Terry Labonte. And how in the world did Terry Labonte end up missing two races? That was my mistake, and it will not happen again. If you win a championship, you will have a champion's provisional. Only one champion's provisional, but you still have that. All right, so now with all the awards out of the way, it is now time to recognize the top 10 in points. Starting in 10th, with 4,087 points, this driver only had one win, and that was the Daytona 500, and that was based off of fuel strategy. This driver was consistently up out in front, never got the wins, but was able to solidify the 10th place. And that driver is Dale Jarrett in the 18 Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Number 9. This driver did not win a race at all this season, but this driver, very popular with the fans, and this driver, he has a lot going for him next year. Driver of the number 8 Budweiser Chevrolet, that is Dale Earnhardt Jr. with 4,108 points. 8th place. This driver has 4,263 points. He ended up garnering one win, and that was at Homestead. In the 40 Coors Light Dodge, he had a lot to accomplish this year, and he got it done, and hopefully he's able to keep that moving in 2002. That is Sterling Marlin. At 4,311 points, the 7th place driver had quite a few wins at the beginning of the season, winning at Bristol, Martinsville, and Pocono. This driver did kind of slump at the second half of the season, but he was able to finish seventh in points. And that driver, the number two Miller Lite Ford, that is Rusty Wallace. At 4,319 points, this driver had two wins, those being at Chicago and New Hampshire. This driver, he likes to intimidate them. He loves to get inside those drivers' minds, and it shows. Six in points belongs to Dale Earnhardt and the number three GM Goodrich Chevrolet. At 4,369 points, this driver had only one win, and that was at Richmond, but this driver was consistently out front when it mattered. Driver at number 28, Haviland Ford, that is Davey Allison. In the close battle in the top 10 in points, at 4,376 points, this driver is the highest up driver to not have a win in the season. But fortunately for him, he's constantly up in the top 5 and top 10, which got him the points, so he is consistently up there in points. In the number 99, Sitco Ford, that is Jeff Burton. Third place, with 4,611 points, this driver ended up garnering two wins, the Coke 600 and Atlanta. This driver, he looked like to be the favorite, but kind of fell out late but he has a lot to look forward to in 2002. This driver on the number 20 Home Depot Pontiac is Tony Stewart. The runner-up driver. This driver, he had quite a few wins, winning at Atlanta, Richmond, and Rockingham. He was able to be out in front and he kind of slowly creeped his way up. Finishing second in points in the number 83 tied Ford for Moroso Rudd Racing, Ricky Rudd. And now finally, your champion. With 4,883 points, he won early at Las Vegas and he won often. Winning also at California, Dover, Sonoma, and Indy, this driver proved that he was the best in 2001. He is also the most popular driver in 2001. 
Driving at the number 24, DuPont Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon is your 2001 Cup Series champion. So that'll do it here for One More Spark 2001. Thank you guys so much for being along for the ride here. It's been an honor to show you guys what I think 2001 would be like with all these different what ifs. But I, I am going to keep on going. So part seven is going to be the Q&A session. In a couple of days here, I'm going to go ahead and post up the Q&A video. And in this Q&A video, I am going to discuss a lot about One More Spark. Kind of reflecting on everything that went on into this series and what I plan to do moving forward. So once again, a lot went on here. Lots of good racing, lots of different cars, lots of wrecks, lots of things to discuss. And it's all thanks to you guys for letting me put this on for you. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up one more Spark 2001. It has been a ride. It's been tiring. It's been exhausting. But you know what? It's been worth it. So for the final time in 2001, thank you guys so much for all the support. And thank you all for the patience too. I know that these videos aren't coming out as frequent as you want, but I appreciate you guys sticking it out. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time.